Hello, Gemini. Welcome, welcome. And out comes the Knight of Pentacles, which is totally not a surprise since you're taking on this very Knight of Pentacles vibe this year. Slow, methodical. Still in your true Gemini essence, of course. But really what's happening is you are absolutely being guided to connect with this life purpose of yours. And the universe is really needing you to, to be honest with yourself about a lot of that stuff. Honest with yourself about what you're doing, you know, because this is a very self-critical type of energy. And sometimes that's needed in order for us to make major strides. And you're a sign that is so active and so like just full of energy and so full of life. You know, like I got to tell you that uh, I look to my Gemini people. I, I don't have tons of Gemini friends, um, but the friends that I do have that are Gemini or have a Gemini moon or something, I, I always go to them when I'm needing like just to lighten up, you know, because <laughs> I can be so serious with like my Scorpio and my Virgo stuff. And like whenever I just need to just get out of my head and and just release, like I can look to my Gemini people to let's go on a fun adventure. Let's do something creative. Let's talk about fun stuff. Let's talk about, you know, the, the stuff that's interesting and, and you know, like all the scientific developments of, of something or the politics of something, you know, and it just kind of, it makes it, makes life just seem a little bit more approachable sometimes coming in contact with my Gemini people. And you do have a very nurturing spirit about you, you know, like you really do genuinely care about the people in your life. And so you always feel safe with your Geminis. But you're on a trajectory no doubt about it. Sorry, I'm trying to straighten that out for you. Okay, there you go. <laughs> you are on a trajectory and it is an important one. A major, major shift is being made in your life. And any of the superficial stuff that has remained in your life, it's not going to have a place anymore. You're not going to be able to make it fit because the higher priorities, your higher spiritual calling is knocking at your door. And you may need to pull in a little bit. You may need to retract a little bit just to kind of get your head back on your shoulders and be like, wait, okay, so what am I supposed to do now? And spend a lot of time meditating. Like you guys are powerful meditators because of the Mercury rulership, just like Virgo. Mercury is the messenger. So wherever he needs to go, he'll go. All you got to do is tell him to go there. It's like a runner, you know, like in your office, you have a runner you need to drop these documents off. You need to go take this package, go pick this up, go bring it here. You know, like he's your runner. Send him, use him. He'll connect you with your purpose. He'll go up to Mount Olympus and ask Zeus, okay, what is, what is this Gemini supposed to be doing? For those of you who already are in contact with your purpose, who already kind of know where you're headed and what you're supposed to be doing and your contribution in this world, um, Keep using Mercury, keep sending him up to either Olympus or to the underworld, you know, so that you can contact um, the deeper inner workings of your soul as well. There is darkness here with the dark horse. You, you are going to need to utilize that darker duality of yours in order to propel you forward. It's the integration of the two, white and black, masculine and feminine. It is the, actually the black, the feminine nature that's coming out here. The underworld stuff, the inner workings of the soul and the subconscious. Like I said, you're being propelled into this new arena, this uncharted territory. And sometimes it does require us to completely leave behind something that we did work really hard for because now, and now I'm saying it's 1111. How perfect for that, for a Gemini, 1111 AM. And we've got this completely blank slate ahead of you. It does mean sometimes 
to accept the fact that whatever path you were on over the past 10 years, that that's just not really where you're needing to go now. You know, you're being transferred, transferred to a new department in the spiritual realm. And I just happened to see the bottom of the deck, which is the lovers, which is your card. Okay. It's a sign, you know, 11, 11 a.m., getting your card. It's your angels talking to you. Your guardians. Hey, Gemini, you're needed. You are a soldier in this world, and, and we do need you. Six of Cups, Six of Pentacles. This is a beautiful energy, although I do have a love-hate relationship with it because it often keeps us in the past. And it often keeps us connecting with things that are not necessarily relevant anymore. There is a tendency and a temptation to revisit comfortable places. But what's really being needed now as a pharaoh who is out to conquer new kingdoms, if you're going to conquer new kingdoms, you have to go to the new kingdom, to the territory that you don't know, to the land of the unknown. Okay, You have to be uncomfortable. And you're good at that. Not only are you a Gemini, but you're mutable energy. That's, uh, that's what mutables are good at. Sagittarius, Pisces, Virgo, Gemini. Like you can get uncomfortable and it's okay. You can adapt. You being the most adaptable of the entire Zodiac, in my humble opinion, for whatever that's worth. <laughs> you and Sagittarius for sure. And so the Six of Cups is tempting and it's comfortable and it's nice and you may be kind of wanting to hear from certain people and, and you may be wanting to reestablish some connection of some kind, a new romance, whatever. But I, I think, again, deep down with the dark horse here and the darkness of the, of the night as the Eight of Cups, deep down, you know that that's not where you're being called to be. I've been inspired to say this a lot. It's a model that I've incorporated into my own daily life. And whenever this card comes out, it triggers this thing. So I'm just saying it for now. So I may repeat it a few months out from now, but it's not just about being grateful for what you have. It's about being grateful for what you have to give. And we have so much to give. You are a teacher of the Zodiac. You are a aggregator of information. You have knowledge to give. You have a very important voice. It is because of you that the written word exists right? And so it's important for you to share your story, to share your life, to share your experiences with others. I am feeling a, a writing quality coming out for you. I don't know why that is. Well, the Leo stuff going on in your third house, your natural house makes sense. The Aquarius stuff, all about the words and everything. Um, let's see what else comes out here. If you are feeling compelled to write, please do it. Please put it down on paper. or in the computer, on your blog, or whatever. Hmm. Card of Taurus could be an earth sign. That's definitely someone. Again, the darkness here, his black throne, connected with the past.
be conscious that you're not continually writing the same story. I feel a draw here happening. Okay, there's temptation for sure. Maybe love. But they represent the black horse in some kind of way. They contribute to the subconscious programming. Is it a chapter that you really do need to leave behind? A father, a lover, a friend, a business partner, something that really does need to be put to the... They're, in a weird way, they're not looking at you here. Not in a weird way. They're not looking at you here. You're both wearing armor. He's got his armor on under his robes. The King of Pentacles can be tough. And it is hard for a Gemini to understand, I think, because you, you are one of the most open, an evolved and a, a mature Gemini is very open hearted. And just like, yeah, let's be friends. Let's go. Let's do it. You know, and you just share yourself. But when it comes to certain people, if you sense in any way, intuitively that they've got their armor on even though with the appearance of being open right it's on underneath you immediately put your armors up and you may do that again subconsciously so this person represents some kind of guardedness there is guardedness between the two of you. And, and I'm wondering if this person isn't really willing or able to really give you what it is that you're seeking. This person isn't able to reciprocate. And this is all about reciprocation here. Sometimes this can represent one person giving too much. See, I often see a Knight of Pentacles as being the giver and this person just waiting for things to come, right? This isn't someone that usually exerts a great deal of effort. They have a really hard time exerting effort. They just wait for things to come to them. So if you're continually going to them, if you're continually approaching them, how much more can you, how much more do you have to give? See, be grateful for what you have to give, but only so long as it's healthy, <laughs> you know? I never advocate people self-sacrificing themselves for something that's kind of just this negative, vampiric thing. Not saying, I don't think this is a bad person, right? It's just, you're on different wavelengths. Let's see what else comes out here. Mm -hmm. Listen to the internal voice because the moons are coming out really hot and heavy here. And there's even actually a lot of stars, the pentacles in the center, the moons on the shoulders here. Intuition is so much a part of your sort of inner workings, you know? It's very, very strong inside a Gemini spirit. It's easy, too, for you to interpret it most of the time if you're not being clouded or distracted by something. Um, because of the conversion quality that you possess. Converting thoughts into words, converting thoughts into workable information. It's not a challenge for you the way it is for a lot of other people. Um, it comes in in a logical way. You can hear the voices, you can see the information, no problem. 
if you're feeling torn in any way, shape, or form, then it's best to do your best <laughs> to quiet the mind as much as possible, to allow the information to just flow in without judgment. Because whenever we're feeling torn between two things, it's because our head and heart are saying two different things. And sometimes you need to just say, okay, emotions, you go sit in that corner. Thoughts, you go sit in that corner. I'm not gonna listen to either of you. And I'm just going to allow the inspiration to come. Because we all have that knowing. Everyone is blessed with that sense of knowing. And it's 1122, I just happened to see it. <laughs> I don't even know why. Like I said last month, like I think I'm just doing it on purpose now or like subconsciously my internal clock is like, okay, look at the clock now. Okay, 11 minutes goes by. Um, and just sit with it. Sit with your thoughts not talking to you for once. I know that's really hard to do. I've been putting that into practice myself. It's really hard to do. Um, but telling your thoughts to just shut up for a minute and telling your emotions to just like stop it so that you can actually just see the truth and see the ultimate solution and see what needs to be done. Let the gut speak. And then movement ensues. I like the Six of Swords. For whatever reason this month, I'm seeing it all like traveling into paradise without baggage. Traveling into the new realm, traveling into the paradise, which I genuinely see on the other side here, into the smooth, crystal clear, aqua colored waters without baggage. And that's really what this is truly about, this kind of release. And I, in a weird way, now this may be a significant other, you know, you guys may just be like having a weird thing. It's, it is Mercury retrograde after all. We are in eclipse season, yada, 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 all the stuff that you guys probably already know. And so we do have that stuff still going on. So if things are just a little bit weird right now, it doesn't mean it's always going to be weird. It doesn't mean there's going to be a separation. It just means that... Uh, you need to just connect internally more than anything. That that's the most important thing for you right now. And to just keep moving toward whatever this kind of ultimate goal is, this life purpose goal. This is the only major arcana coming out so far. So this is kind of the strongest one. And it is a card of cancer the Cancer Capricorn axis that we just kind of went through some pretty heavy stuff with. There's depths there for sure. There's, you know, second and eighth house. Eighth house stuff is pretty deep. You guys have Pluto and Saturn in there. So there's stuff. Soul level stuff. Seven of Swords. So there's the dual nature of Gemini coming out here. The forward motion and the backward motion. <laughs> moving right and moving left. So this is a hiatus, self-doubt and fear. This represents the things that truly do hold us back in spite of our forward motion. You are moving forward. That's why this card came out. You are moving into this kind of paradise, into a better life, into a better way of thinking, better way of existing. And yet there still seems to be a fear that that's possible. There still seems to be doubt that you're capable or whatever not the case please any again put that thought those thoughts in the corner for a timeout stop listening to that bullshit whatever bullshit you're feeding yourself it's especially if someone else is feeding that to you stop it 
That's all I can say. And, and that's going to take some inner work. It's going to take some inner strength in order to do that. And it can be really hard. But you can. You're totally capable. If you can have so many thoughts, then you can also control them. There's so much to celebrate about where you're going. You know, I had a friend. He's got a Gemini moon. I have a friend. He's a Virgo, uh, Capricorn ascendant, Gemini moon. And he has gone through significant life changes recently, wherein his whole company just said, we're closing up shop. And so everyone kind of, but they all had to like finish their work still because there's obligations and contracts and things in place. And now he's like, I have a blank slate, but he's feeling very overwhelmed by all the options now. Do I move to San Francisco? Do I move to Chicago? Do I move down to South America? He's from Colombia. Like, where do I go? What am I supposed to, like, I have so many options now that I am feeling paralyzed by all the options and which one is really best when internally I think he knows what he really is needing to do and where he's really wanting to go but he's so focused a lot on like the money maybe that's even what this is the representative of money Taurus so focused on chasing the money so focused on the security of something that he's not following his heart I'll tell you something that if this doesn't represent a person and this represents safety and security and financial abundance for you, you won't be making the right decision. Not to say that the best choice and financial reward can't come together. It doesn't mean that they can't coexist. They can. But if it's an either or, don't go with the money option. Plain and simple, don't go with the money option. Go with the emotional fulfillment option. The life path option. You'll know what it is. If there's anything a Gemini can do, it's know, to know something. Beautiful. See, the money is, is definitely a thing for sure. But again, I often see this old man as being very detached very emperor-like, untouchable. Money is not his thing. He's not caught up in the material parts of stuff. He wants the fulfillment. And you know what's so funny? Once you start chasing your life path, everything that you used to chase like money starts to just kind of like follow you and i think i said this in another sign it's like here's all the money and all the stuff you want and all the kind of whatever um all the stuff that you grew up thinking that that's what was important here you are chasing that and it's like ah uh, and then the minute you stop it's like wait you're not chasing me now okay now i'm gonna start chasing you and that's what happens and that's what is happening as long as you don't get in your own way or you don't let anyone else's opinions and ideas get in your way. How beautiful is this? A card of connection, of contracts, a card of communication in spite of Mercury retrograde. Good communication, being on the same page, collaboration, and many of you finding love. Many of you finding that spiritual thing <laughs> another amazing card for Gemini the balance of the two masculine and feminine working cohesively any questions that you have about your path will be rectified this month Mercury retrograde is such an awesome time for you to tap into that extraordinarily creative place. It's an amazing time for you to do that. You are more connected during a Mercury retrograde to your intuition and the other worlds than any other time. Because it's not logical, it's not left brain, it is right brain. 
type stuff. It's creative stuff. So now's the time to use it. All right. If you do make some kind of an agreement or contract this month, I suspect that it will be the right one. Okay. So a lot to clarify. This one, this one, this one, this one especially. Okay. We'll need to clarify the connection here as well. And um, so if you want to join me for the comprehensive, I will see you there. If not, then I'll see you next month. All right. Thanks so much. Take care.